Hello, it's Teresa here. Not from South East London today, but from Eastbourne in East Sussex in the UK. This was a belated birthday present for me with my daughter. She bought it for me. So I'm actually recording this in a hotel room. In fact, I believe it's the hotel that you can see on the picture on the screen, I'm sure it is, the Burlington. Um, we're having a, a lovely time. It's only for a long weekend, but it's lovely. So I thought I'd include a couple of pictures just while I do my ramble thing. So having said that, this is going to be a bit of an unusual uh, video. Some of it will be filmed in the hotel room and the remainder will be done at home so apologies for the poor quality at the beginning the inspiration for this um, is from a variety of places what happened I got down here with my daughter and realized I'd left my sewing at home so from there I had to scout about, have a look, see what was available in the room. My daughter had a few threads because she's a great cross stitcher as some of you know. And um, anyway, I had some luck. I went to a charity shop and picked up some vintage pieces and decided that I would do something, not sure what, with these pieces. So I took them back to the hotel room and um, I just sat there while my daughter napped and I, I thought, oh, what am I going to do? I had scissors, threads and some vintage pieces that I don't normally like cutting up but needs must and um, I thought, well, I am upcycling them actually so I didn't feel too bad. Before I move on, I just want to say about the two photographs. One, um, the earlier one, and this one of the beautiful pier. That uh, don't be fooled by the weather. We're down here. Um, we are down here, actually, in December. There's snow everywhere. It's touch and go whether we will actually get back because the trains are either being cancelled, delayed, or there's a strike the day after tomorrow. So getting back is going to be a bit risky. And as I say, it is absolutely freezing. We walked over to the pier and just stepped on the wooden, the wooden floor in there. Uh, my daughter looked at me as if I was ancient. I said, oh, mum, I don't think you should go on there in case you fall over. Well, I did indeed put my foot down and it was slippery. <laughs> so we turned back. But it is absolutely freezing here. Even in the hotel, there's a problem with the plumbing, believe it or not. But uh, it's not spoiling our stay anyway. So um, thoroughly enjoying it. But anyway, going to um, crack on in a minute. But I'm just going to tell you what we were up to last night as well and I'm sure you know you might be bored by this so go and put the kettle on and make yourself a piece of toast to go with your, your tea okay <laughs> this picture I've just thrown that in we also went to see the film Matilda <laughs> two big kids um it's based on Rose Dahl, Roald Dahl's book, Matilda, and um, I love Roald Dahl, so does my daughter. So we had a really nice evening at the local cinema in Eastbourne, and we watched the musical on the, the video. And um, those of you who remember the film of Danny DeVito, it is just as good as that. I was a bit sceptical, thinking it couldn't possibly be as good as that film, but believe me, it is. So enough self-indulgence now, time to crack on and carry on with our project. So as I've already said, I'll, I'll be filming some of this in the hotel room. Um, this is just a collection of vintage bits and pieces, mostly table runners, serviettes or napkins. I think there might be a couple of tablecloths here as well. I managed to pick up as a bundle in a local charity shop here in Eastbourne. Um, some of them are lovely, some of them aren't so lovely. But I've decided to go against the grain and cut them up and use them for applique. Some of these, and I believe this one, I might have at home as well. Some I must produce, so I, I have no problem of cutting those up. 
but like these these are vintage and they are hand sewn very few stitches have been used um, there's also all a, a similarity in um, the shades of thread that's been used in the vintage ones and the background fabric this as you can see is mass produced so um, as I said, no problem cutting that up. There's now for the background fabric, I've chosen this. Um, this is quite a nice length. It's some sort of napkin, and I'm going to use that, that very, very pretty piece there for the background, and I'm going to apply my pieces of embroidery on top of this. And now I'm, I apologise for... The, the way this is being filmed, the lengthwise, um, it's on my camera. So hopefully I can rectify that before I carry on with the next part. So you can see the pieces that I've cut out from all those pieces of vintage and I think antique pieces of um, cloth. I've laid my jacket on the bed, um, otherwise you wouldn't see the, the white the white backgrounds and the white pieces against the white of the duvet <laughs> so that is why it's on my jacket now I have cut all the pieces out as you can see there and I'm spending some time now putting down the pieces that I've cut out I don't think I'm actually going to um, spend too much time just play placing them i'm going to do do them randomly just as they come um it's quite a job actually to do this because i've got quite a number of these pieces and it was indeed strange cutting out through these um but yeah i'm not i'm not too worried about it um i just need to be a bit respectful i think it's just a strange feeling to feel many hands have taken part or are taking part in this particular project the first thing I've done is tack all these little pieces, all these little motifs on the background fabric. Um, I haven't been very careful about the size of the stitches. As you can see here, some of the threads go from one motive over to the other. As long as they're secured and held in place, um, I'm quite happy because that makes it so much easier to work with. As you can see, not a pin in sight because <laughs> didn't bring any, did I? I've left them all at home. <laughs> Now, this is where it starts getting interesting, I think. The stitch I've chosen to use is the old trusted blanket stitch. Now, I always say some people call it buttonhole stitch, but it isn't. It is blanket stitch. And I just love doing this. <laughs> At the moment, I've decided to go round the, uh, the edge of all these individual pieces with the blanket stitch changing the colours as I go. Um, I think it's going to be one mess of colour, but I don't mind that. I love working with colour. So I'm not sure if you can see that close up. I'm not going to demonstrate that because the environment's not right for doing that and I'm having trouble um, filming this um, with on the camera. So just to say it is the blanket stitch that we've done numerous times and that you can see it quite nicely there I think so I'm going to carry on and do that around all these small pieces well I'm back home now my daughter and I managed to get a connection from London um, down into Kent but we were really lucky because there were so many cancellations and delays because of the snow we only managed to get the connection because the train that we needed had actually been delayed by something like half an hour and within that half an hour our train drew up from Eastbourne and um, we managed to get get the train that we needed and so for us it worked out well but it was freezing and, and a very very pretty though it was very pretty but I did feel sorry for those who um, thought they were going to be stranded because as well the next day there was going to be one of these train strikes um, as there is today as well so it was quite a, a tricky situation but anyway I managed to finish this I've no idea what the, <laughs> how the um, smaller videos on the phone are going to pan out because I haven't actually watched them yet 
this is the finished bit I've just turned it around I'll make it bigger now all those little pieces from the vintage tablecloths and runners have all been attached to the background with blanket stitch all the way around it is very very busy but as you know that's how I like my work very very busy and it is very very pretty now I'm going to make this smaller maybe you can get an idea of how it looks uh, there we go right so I've kept the the lace all the way around as I intended and I'm just going to pull this up slowly I have no idea at this stage what I'm going to do with it but hopefully by the time I finish the next piece on here the next bit of work um, I'll have a clearer image because after all I didn't intend to do anything having forgotten to take my sewing with me so this is really running with both feet on the ground it's all off the cuff to, ha to add another cliche so um, there's been very very little planning in, in this just from the bits that I picked up um, that I've managed to do this that is the original if you see that that is the original piece of embroidery that was on here on the background so that isn't appliqued however I still did the blanket stitch around the shape there all the other pieces that you see have all been appliqued so I'm going to um, just catch my breath a bit I think and just have a look to see what needs doing but just at this stage looking down I might fill in some of these shapes I might do um, some stitchery in these negative shapes here mm. yeah that is something worth thinking about I don't really want to touch the embroidery inside um, people because these are from many pieces as you know uh, have spent quite a lot of, a lot of time doing these you can see those two are from the same piece of work and these um, many hands have touched this and it's it's always weird to feel that um, I'm touching the work of someone from or people from the past anyway I'm going to crack on and I might make a start later with some stitchery in the negative shapes okay so we'll see how this pans out I'm quite pleased with this it's um it's different it's, <laughs> it's unique uh, I need to think about what to do with it okay then probably make more sense actually when I do work out what I'm doing with it actually I'm looking at the screen sometimes I can see things better on the screen than in front of me could fold that yeah that could be actually be all sorts of things if it's folded I'm not sure about keeping it this size because that is um, a bit of a, a beast isn't it but anyway I'll play around and it'd be interesting to see what happens when I get back to you <laughs> well we hope it's going to be interesting anyway <laughs> I've decided to do a back-to-back -back blanket stitch, a hairy caterpillar and all that is, is doing the blanket stitch back-to-back -back. so the legs are coming along here, are facing outward and the back is facing the back of the previous row and this is a really nice stitch to do it's probably one of my favourite stitches I'm going to go around all the applique in a dark brown it, I know it looks black but it is actually dark brown oh this is really nice to do I don't think it will take too long so if you can see that stitch there how it's how nice that's looking already uh, I still have no idea 
what I'm going to make with the finished piece. I'm hoping I get a little bit of inspiration for that very sh very soon because um, it's not going to take much longer to make. And this is just so, so lovely. So I'm going to carry on with this, just with the, the blanket stitch. And we've done this a thousand times. So on this short little video, I'm not going to demonstrate it. But look how good that is. I think that looks really lovely okay so the next time you see this all those pieces hopefully <gasps> fingers crossed will be um, outlined here it is finished I'm not going to add anything else to the front as you can see here um, I did the back-to-back -back right the way around all the shapes i've deliberately left some of these plain here I d it, it did occur to me that um i might need a bit of bling on there but i've fought against that and i think no because it's really busy in places like this these offer a little bit of relief the contrast between the busy and the not so busy here the calm the same along here as well and a nice free bit there I'm just going to move this up very very slowly so you can see the whole effect so now the temptation was also really really great to dot some of these aids or embellish them a bit more but I thought no no um, as I explained before somebody's done done this completed this it's somebody else's work um, so I I decided to leave it as it is it just doesn't feel right to me at the moment to carry on and do more to this I think it's quite enough as it is now the next thing to do is to put a line in I'm, I've decided I'm going to make a very small bag a little drawstring bag um, not sure what I'll pop in it but I will find something so this is what I'm going to line it with just a little piece of fabric the same size as this now I'm not sure if I gave you the size of this if I mention the size but it is 16 by 10 inches down now unfortunately I think because I'm now going to line it I'm going to lose the lace in the seam allowance but that doesn't matter now what I'm going to do is make the lining and the front into two little bags now I'm just going to sew it down here down the long way here and across this way here and I will leave about three inches from there to there open now this has got a fold so obviously it doesn't need to be sewn along the fold so all I need to do this time is just once again just along there down the bottom and along leave about three inches open and carry on there and exactly the same here right sides together and that has a fold as well so I'm just going to sew down here about half an inch in right the way down here along there and then carry on there okay so that is the next thing to do just in case you're wondering why I'm keeping my hands out of view a little bit I've burnt my hand I burnt my hand on the element in the oven and it's quite nasty looking so I've decided to keep this hand <laughs> out of view but in case you have caught a glimpse of it and thought what's going on there it's because it's it's burnt there but it's okay it's not hurting at all but it doesn't look nice so anyway I'm going to machine sew these now and I've that. sewn this all the way round right the way down here right the way across here and not stopped for a gap we don't need a gap along there 
So, and I've actually sewn along there a couple of times, three to be precise, because this is so thick, I think that it needed three rows. Now, I've already trimmed off these. As, as I finished at the machine, I just trimmed off the corners. You can see them here and there. Not too close to the, stitch, the stitching, not close enough to break it, but close enough to take away some of the bulk. I'm going to leave the lace, mostly because it's too, <laughs> it's too tough to cut. Um, my scissors are a little bit blunt, so um, I'm leaving that. Now, next bit is to pull this into the right side. So we start here, as always, with a corner and push that through and the same here with that corner and push that through oh they're coming out quite nice actually now with this pencil which is blunt I'm going to push out the corners as best as I can without going through the seam without going through the stitching Oh yeah, oh, I like that. That is the little bag. So there we are with that. If I turn it around that way, you'll get a better idea. So, so far so good. So I'm going to put the bag inside the lining. You can put the lining inside the bag. Doesn't really make much difference going to match the seams though right where's the seam right so I do want to match the seams like that match the seams and pin right where's that seam sometimes I'll put the lining inside the bag other times I'll put the bag inside the lining as long as the end results okay it doesn't matter right now I'm going to open up open up the two seams here that's to the bag and this is to the lining match the seams there and then I'm going to pin all the way around the edge and as soon as I've done that I'm going to where's my pin as soon as I've done that I'm going to machine sew around the top all the way around the top and I'm going to avoid the lace avoiding that lace there so edge to edge right side to right side and then I should just quickly machine sew Right, that's the machine sewing done all the way around here and I did it twice as well. I'm not going to trim this off. Once this is pulled inside out, I think it's going to make a nice stiff opening. So the big moment now is to pull the bag <laughs> through the opening, through that gap in the lining and there we go. Right, so far so good going to make this a little bit bigger which I should have done ages ago I think right there we go now I'm going to just go back to the sewing machine and just sew this gap now you see the gap here now just fold in the the open bits just what would be the selvage edges now they should automatically naturally just turn in where the seam allowance is they're turning and should fold over naturally at the seam allowance now I've done that so I'm just going to go and machine sew that now if you haven't got a sewing machine that's okay all this machining can be done by hand okay so I'm just going to machine sew that along there yeah now I've over sewn that twice and with zigzag so these ends can just be cut off because I did a back stitch on them. Right. 
Oh, we've almost finished this, and it hasn't take very taken very long at all. There we go. Now, I'm going to put this, the lining, inside. I make this a bit smaller now, so you can see this. Right. Oh, you don't want to look at that old thing, do you? <laughs> oh, my odds and ends. <laughs> oh, my bits and pieces. Right, so that's the lining in there. And I'm going to find the where the join is between the lining and the front and just put a few pins in there. Oh, these blunt pins again. Right, oh, that went down, right down my nail varnish, that pin. Because <gasps> if it didn't go down my nail, I would have screamed. Ah, right. So I'm going to do this all the way around. Pin it. If I can find some decent pins. Yeah, it went down my nail again. My nail varnish again. Right, now after I've pinned this all the way round the top, I'm going to machine sew it. Just going to top stitch it. I'm going to top stitch it actually in two places. Um, one, two, no I'm going to top stitch this in three places. So the first top stitch is on the edge here, just to keep that nice, a nice neat edge. And then I'm going to top stitch two, like trim lines, to thread needle, uh, sorry, to thread ribbon through. Oh, I was hoping that little motive there would be further down. I love that. Right, so that's all the way round. So I'll do this first and then while I'm out there I'm going to top stitch, um, let's have a look, two inches, I'm going to top stitch one, one and a half inches down here. So one and a half inches all the way from there, right, so one and a half inches from the edge here, I'm going to do another line of machine sewing. And then I'm going to do another machine uh, line, um, an inch underneath. So, and here it is finished. All the machine sewing's done. There are three rows of machine sewing. Let's see if we can find them in there. Right, three rows here. You can see one or not. I think I'm making a shadow there. One, two, and three there. Now, they're all sewn right the way round in a circle. So what I need to do now is break the seam where the the um, elastic or the ribbon to go. I'm using the ribbon so I am going to miss the top stitching here. Let me hold that up there. Miss that one. Miss the second row but between the second and the third is where my ribbon's going to go. So I need to find the seam there uh, it's right the way around here and just break very very carefully I'm going to break the stitch in there just a little bit there oh I don't want, want to break the hand sewing the embroidery right so that's broken in the pin I'm going to put the thread through there and then I'm going to pull it all the way around through that broken seam here. I might need a smaller needle. I think I need a smaller needle. Uh, sorry, a smaller pin. 
let's have a look what we have here right that one should be fine smaller pin and then I'm going to pull that pin all the way around it's quite tough this and then decide how long that you want your yours to be I can't get the pin out so I have to cut that off so I think I'm going to make mine. Let's have a look. Nice. I'll put it like that. I'm going to make mine look like maybe that length. What's mine? Mine is about 12 inches long. So I'm going to cut that a little bit. I don't want it that long. And all I'm going to do is not mine. You could over sew them together, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to knot them and call it finished. There we go. Now, if you had two seams here, you would do this as well on the second seam here. So you end up with the drawstring either side. So you'll have that, that side and this side. But because I've only got one seam here, I've only got one end there to pull. So there we go. I'm not sure about that ribbon actually. I think that ribbon needs to be um, maybe patterned both sides or plain both sides. But there we go. And that is our little drawstring bag so I hope you enjoyed that from hotel room or should I say from from charity shop to hotel room to home to draw to draw bag little drawstring bag now if you like this idea and you haven't got any vintage fabric it doesn't matter you can use ordinary fabric from your stash just cut out pieces like this flowers or whatever you have little animals and you can do exactly the same as I have done um, these just happen to be vintage but I could have done exactly the same with my stash by cutting out the flowers so I'm just going to pop something in it this a few sewing things in there Pull it tightly here and there you have it a very small drawstring bag for your precious things I'm not sure that sure there's a, a back of the front to it that's that looks particularly nice but then so does that so I hope you enjoyed that do give it a try um, very very quick very easy to do you do that in a couple of hours well no maybe not a couple of hours couple of evenings okay so let me know what you think about this um, please like it if you do like it if you don't like it just roll on by okay <laughs> so I'm hoping to get another small project out before Christmas so fingers crossed I'm not sure it's the 16th today so I'm not too sure whether I can manage it but I will try just a little project of some sort all right then thank you for all your support I really appreciate it and your lovely lovely comments on YouTube and Facebook as well so thank you very much you see my nail my nail there where the pin kept going the needle kept going through it Okay then, so speak to you soon, take care and keep warm and good luck with those electricity bills. Alright, <laughs> take care, see you soon.